Today's video is about one of the most interesting, fun, and quirky wines that I've encountered. It's also something that is perfect for the holiday season. Hi, I'm Bob Polinsky, Master of Wine. About five years ago, I made a move to Australia for a two-year-long work project. I arrived in Melbourne just a little bit before the Christmas holiday, and I quickly realized the immense popularity of a wine that's on most everyone's table for both Christmas and New Year's, that sparkling Shiraz. In this video, I'll discuss the wine style, and I'll also taste two classic examples. Australia may not be the first place that comes to mind when you think of sparkling wine, but it's been a significant part of the winemaking history there, dating back well over 100 years. Specific to sparkling Shiraz, areas like Barossa, McLaren Vale, and Langhorne Creek have been very much front and center, but it's made in most of the other regions around the country as well. Also, many cases, the wines will be made through the traditional method. That is, the second fermentation takes place in bottle. That means they're not cutting corners. This is a quality-minded way of producing sparkling wine. As an interesting twist, in many cases, liquor muscat or Australian port is used for the dosage. In terms of wine and food pairing, sparkling Shiraz is perfect for traditional holiday meals. It pairs very well with roasted turkey, smoked meats, most anything with cranberry sauce. And for a non-holiday meal, I recall one of the best food and wine combinations I had while living in Australia was sparkling Shiraz with something that I shouldn't be eating anymore, but on occasion I do, a bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich with garlic aioli. Absolute perfection. My point is the fizz and the bright acidity and the very vibrant fruit character that you'll find in sparkling Shiraz will cut through the richness of many dishes. The first wine up is the Bleasdale Sparkling Shiraz from the historic Langhorn Creek Winery, located not all that far from Adelaide. It's made from a blend of vintages. The newer wines lend bright fruit character, while the older bring more complexity and depth. In terms of stemware to be used, I don't think you can go wrong. If you want to use a traditional flute style glass like this, that absolutely would work, no problem whatsoever. My preference is to use a traditional wine glass. And with this, you get much more aromatics and you really get the full range of what the wine has to offer. Okay, let's see how the Bleasdale looks. I've got to say, stunning color. Uh, it has that deep red color to it. Uh, a bit frothy. It looks like there's some good mousse as well. Color is really quite beautiful. Aromatics, uh, this is just a fun wine. It is loaded with that red fruit character. You get that pomegranate, uh, you get some of that cranberry note to it as well. Very aromatic, good freshness. Yeah, there's a vibrancy to this. Uh, absolutely love the way this wine smells. On the palate, this wine delivers on that cranberry and pomegranate character. There's a bit of a savory spice note to it as well. The acidity is bright, it's fresh, it's clean. It gives the wine some, some nice lift on the mid palate. Looking into the glass, the bead or the mousse is very, very fine. On the palate, you do get a little bit of that fizz impact, but it's more of a gentle, soft uh, characteristic. But the wine is nicely put together, there's good length. I see on the back label, the alcohol level is 13.5. It holds together within this wine very, very well. This is a crowd pleaser, and the finish is actually quite dry, but that fruit and that brightness, that freshness and vibrancy carry right through. This is really well made. This is a fun bottle of wine. Next up is the 2019 Best Sparkling Shiraz from the Great Western subregion, which is part of the Grampians, about a two and a half hour drive north of Melbourne. This is one of the oldest, most iconic wine regions of Victoria. This next wine has a crown closure cap, very much like what you'd find with beer or soda. Sometimes you'll find Proseccos and any number of other sparkling wines with this type of closure as well. My suggestion is do not open this like you would beer or soda. It'll release too much of the fizz, so be a little more gentle when you open the bottle. Get a good look at that color. I mean, wonderful intensity to it, beautiful color. 
uh, quite deep at the core, a little bit of fade at the rim. Uh, the mousse looks very, very fine as well. The aroma is sensational. Uh, a little different than the first wine. It showed more of that cranberry pomegranate. This is a little bit more of a, a deeper black fruit characteristic. A little savory spice, a little peppery note to it as well. Oftentimes, that's something you'll find in Shiraz. Finding that in a sparkling wine is, uh, is a bit of an interesting twist, but I think it shows quite well. On the palate, love this wine. Good weight, good depth, structures there. The fizz is not an intense sort of, of fizz to it. It's actually rather soft on the palate. Good weight. Uh, the acidity, just like the first wine, is definitely there to hold the wine together. Carries it right through to the back palate as well. Very good length on this wine. This one has spent two years aged on the lees, so it has a little bit of a, a creamy characteristic to it as well, which is quite interesting for a wine like this. Absolute dazzling bottle of wine. Absolutely love it. Uh, either one of these wines would be fantastic on a holiday table. In the unlikely event that you have some leftover sparkling wine, having a stopper like this is very handy. I've used this type for many years. There's all sorts out there, but for me, this one is absolutely foolproof. It's very inexpensive as well. Essentially, it's a clamp, and when you close it, it expands like so, and it forms a nice airtight seal. Now, if the sparkling wine is half full or more, it'll keep for days with no trouble with this sort of stopper. If you have any questions or comments on Sparkling Shiraz, please post it down below. I try to follow up on each and every one. Hey, if you've not yet subscribed, do it right now. It definitely does help this channel. Hit that like button and also hit the notification bell. That way you'll be kept up to speed on all things happening here. I'm going to be drinking some Sparkling Shiraz tonight. I hope you're drinking something interesting as well. And also, I hope to see you again before too long. Cheers.